plastic forming. Other than using slurry, which has viscosity, the suspension has very low viscosity that can flow by its own weight. People can also use the ceramic paste that behave more like more or less like plastics, plastic forming, forming ceramic green body from moldable or plastic powder additive mixture. Plastic powder additive powder additive mixture okay the major category for so-called plastic forming one so-called injection molding injection molding you inject into a mold the other one is extrusion more commonly extrusion okay here we show a schematic for a extrusion machine you have again piston or a cylinder you have your sample plastic paste and then you are forcing the paste to go through a certain types of opening, right? Certain type of opening to shape it a certain way. Um, basic requirement for plastic paste. It has to be moldable. It has to be able to plastically deform. By saying plastically deform, we essentially mean they can under Shearing stress, it can permanently change shape, right? Irreversibly change shape above certain stress level, which we call yield strength. Shearing yield strength, okay? And the ability also to withstand the deformation under its own weight. After you plastically shape it, you do not want, okay, take it out by its own weight, it collapsed. Make sense? It, you want it to be able to withstand its deformation of the shearing stress due to its own weight. Make sense? This is different from slurry. F slurry, it cannot sustain its own weight, right? You have to pour them into a mold, into a container, hold it before it dries. Here, once you release it from the mold, well, you pretty much have the same stuff, but it has to be able to maintain roughly its shape without collapsing, without significant uh, plastic deformation. Okay, extrusion instrument. The people talk about a piston type, something like this, moving down directly, or screw type, using a screw kind of machine, something like this. You are adding feet to here, and this is your so-called screw, and it rotates and pushing the paste, thick ceramic paste through here, through an opening with certain shape. Okay. Extrusion formulation. The formulation is very important to manipulate the plastic behavior, like how viscous it's going to be. What's the so-called uh, um, yield strength? Right, how much shearing stress it can withstand before it plastically deform. For clay, it's related to powder water interaction. And for technical ceramics, quite often people add organic bundle. How much organic bundle? What types of organic bundle? And what's the molecular weight of the organic bundle people are adding in? And what is the so called plasticizer? Right, to reduce the TG, to allow it to flow. And the formulation example, here I'm giving two types. One is so-called white wire. Where do we use white wire? Toilet, typical toilet, white wire, washing basin, something like that. And quite often you have a formulation something like this. For 36 volume percent by water, that's your solvent, right? Liquid phase. And uh, all these are ceramic phase different ceramic phase, give it a different property, and a lot of details into it. Um, I'm not even expert, but anyway, complex. For technical ceramics, for example, people are trying to make high purity aluminum oxide. Okay, then it's, in terms of ceramics, it's pretty simple. You have one phase or two phases. Quite often, only one phase for ceramic aluminum. Here, by volume, 45% to 50%. And the majority remaining part is just uh, your water or solvent, right? R roughly one to one by 
volume. But if you think which one has higher density, aluminum, aluminum oxide or alumina versus water, which one has higher density? Alumina has much higher density, like three, around three, which means if the volume ratio is one to one, by weight is what? It's roughly three to one. Make sense? So it's a slurry, your slurry by weight is pretty much the majority should be should be the ceramic phase, in this case alumina, and the minor phase by weight is your solvent, but, but by volume is actually one to one, okay, roughly. And then people add different types of organics at a relatively lower concentration, you see what I mean? Lower concentration, and the majority of them is actually binder with a little bit of dispersion, some plasticizer, some lubricant. Okay, and as we mentioned, for the slurry or paste, you actually in most cases you do not want too much dispersion. Okay, and actually you also do not want too high binder content because the binder after the water goes, the binder will remain in your system, and if you have too much binder, you have too high porosity after you burn off the organics, which is detrimental for your sintering. Okay, so it's a compromise. You cannot have too low binder because too low binder, you are doing extrusion. You do not have enough polymer to glue them together to give you the strength. Make sense? Yeah. On the other hand, you cannot have too high binder. Think. Make sense? This is kind of okay. The the stuff that we are we are thinking. And then for injection molding, which is the other technique other than extrusion for injection molding, uh, six ceramic powder, injecting it into mold with plastic behavior to shape it. Okay, here we just show a kind of schematic. You have the paste. You are forcing it through a nozzle and then into certain opening, which is people call your mold. Of course, people may add some lubricant to help release it after you open up your mold. Make sense? And then the application for injection molding is production of high volume, but small parts, small parts. You do not do injection molding if you want a large part. Quite often the dimension cannot be too large, okay? Can be complex shape, something like this. Injection molding, the example formulation, the binder content are typically higher than in, let's say, slip casting. Injection molding, when you do this, you typically have a higher binder content. And here we give two example formulation. The powder means Ceramic powder, we have major binder, sometimes you may have another binder and other additives. So here the solvent, you don't need a lot of solvent, but powder, polymer binder, 14% versus this one. It's pretty high, like 1 to 5 ratio. Here combined like 1 to 5 ratio by weight. You see what I mean? This versus that. The roughly 1 to 5, 1 to 6 ratio between in weight between the polymer binder and the ceramic. Considering the, the, the density difference, roughly 1 to 10 probably by volume, I guess. This one, sorry, this one is higher density. Well, it means it has a lot of volume. This typically has higher density, right? 1 to 5, and the density, let's say, is 2 to 1 or 3 to 1 by volume, actually, can be around 2 to 1, 3 to 1 by volume. It's a lot of polymer binder. Okay, and some other additives. Injection molding is actually have not a broad industry application because tooling cost. Tooling cost can be expensive unless you are really going to very high volume production. Otherwise, typically a precision mold costs tens of thousands of dollars. 
or even more expensive. And uh, that high polymer content, all these, they are necessary to remove them, but they are pretty difficult if your polymer content is high. And do imagine when you remove polymer, the polymer, if you burn them, polymer becomes carbon dioxide and the water, those escape as gas, and you have difficulty to maintain it. If you do them too quickly, it's going to have a so-called explosion, right? The too much bubble of gas formation, you are going to explode your green body. So that's why high polymer content, which is tricky or difficult for you to remove. That's why injection molding, you mold it, you need a lot of plastics or polymer, but you have to be very careful with bundle removal, okay, which limits its application. It's uh, more complicated than injection molding of what? Polymer. People do injection molding of polymer, pure polymer a lot, and it's cheap, very, very cheap. But for ceramic paste, although it still has that plasticity, it's way more difficult to do than polymer because the plastic, the ceramic paste compared with polymer has much higher density. Polymer, the density is quite often only around one, slightly higher than one. Ceramics, depending on what ceramics you are dealing with, can be much higher. Much higher viscosity, which means it's having difficulty, you need a higher pressure to penetrate into fine shapes. Much higher modulus, you're talking about the composites, the modulus is the contribution for the polymer part plus the modulus for the ceramic part, which can be tens or hundreds times higher than the polymer you are dealing with, makes sense? Which means it takes a lot of stress to change its shape. Okay, and thermal conductivity, higher thermal conductivity, it cools your, your system. Okay, and the lower fracture toughness. Polymers, you inject mold, you can burn the back and forth pretty easily, but ceramic paste, you burn back and forth easily, that ceramic paste can crack, much lower fracture toughness. All these make other, in addition to the binder removal, makes the injection molding of ceramic paste more challenging, way more challenging than injection molding of polymer, which also limits its application. Make sense? Injection molding people use it for many, many polymer processing. A lot of the fun shapes that we saw are by injection molding, but not for ceramic paste, because high density, much higher viscosity, much lower fracture toughness, which means you crack too easily. Okay?